trivia game we've ever done before. King of the Q means that you, you got to get on a hot streak. How hot does that streak have to be? <laughs> Pretty hot. you got to get 27 questions correct in a row. I know it sounds like a daunting task. Don't worry. I'm going to walk you through it. It's just... On a road trip, you like to make a lot of stops, much to your Diet Mountain Dew, then I got to go back to the same bathroom again before I leave. Up to our question authors here today because we're doing King of the Q recently. We have tons of questions for asking. So, big shout out to Audrey. Y'all know Audrey. She's a great uh, host of the show. She hosts the earlier match and she writes a lot of the questions, as does Andy. So, Audrey and Andy, I salute you. Uh, Rumor has it, Andy was up at It came to her in a dream, and she woke up so inspired, she said she had to write down this question in the middle of the night. It's like, yeah, that's how Keith Richards wrote the riff to satisfaction, is he woke up in the middle of the night, and he just, it hit him like a bolt of lightning. Like when Doc Brown slipped on the toilet, fell, hit his head, and he drew the flux capacitor. I'm not sure which question it is, but I'm sure it's going to be just as great as all the other ones. So how do you play, King of the Q? That's all, you just get questions right. That's all you got to do. But look, even if you miss a question, hang in there and keep playing. Keep answering as many correct answers as you can, because every time you get a point, every time you get a question right, that gets added to your leaderboard total. Uh, the leaderboard is still going on. we got, uh, I think, 15, 16, 17 days left to get as many points as you can. At the end of that time period, whoever has the most points, you win $1,500. Pretty easy, right? So, look, maybe you're not the best at trivia, but maybe the best at trivia took a couple days off. And now, look at you. You answered a lot of questions correct. You never had a perfect round. Doesn't matter. You still might get $1,500. So we're locked in. We're ready to go. Follow me on social media because I want to know who's winning. I want to know which question threw you off. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Mark Ellis Live. And don't follow me just to see me or my dumb jokes. Follow me to see the dog. Maybe the dog will make an appearance by the end of this show. Molly the Wonder Dog is her name. And she's sleeping right now. Early returns say she's not making an appearance, but you never know. She tends to rally. Okay, we're ready to go. Ready to get going on King of the Q. Before I ask your first question, remember, share this app. Let your friends and family know that, look, we're all struggling out there being by ourselves in somewhat isolation mode. But it doesn't mean you can't be part of a community. Come in here and hang out with your best friends. 1,000, 2,000 friends, and play some virtual trivia. Every time you share this app and somebody uses your referral code, you get an extra life and they get an extra life. It, it's not because I'm a nice guy. It's because that's what that's what they told me to say. So there you go. I wouldn't give you an extra life, but I'm just the host of this show. So I have no say whatsoever. All I get to do is ask the first question. You got multiple choice and a couple fill in the blanks here today. Your first one's multiple choice. You're going to ease you into this. You ready? Take a breath. Might be a while. Somebody's got to get 27 correct in a row. And your first question is, what is the complementary color of green? Is it red, blue, or yellow? I think all those colors clash, but I think we're looking for more of a scientific term. Red and green, I think Christmas. Red and blue, I think Seahawks. Green and yellow, I kind of think Green Bay Packers. What's the answer? Looking for red. Yes, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in here. Okay, 561 correct answers. That was a tough one to kick off with. So, again, don't worry. Look, my app just came up and it said, you want to use your extra life? That'd be kind of unfair if I was playing along because I got the answers right in front of me. I'm just watching. I'm just doing quality assurance here, okay? I didn't use my extra life. Your next question. Another multiple choice one. In what band is Adam Levine the lead singer of? Is it Coldplay, Maroon 5, or Imagine Dragons? All right, I got to ask if this is Audrey. This is Andy as or somebody else because we've had a few Adam Levine pop-ins in recent days here on the queue. So somebody's a big fan of which band? Which band? They did the Super Bowl halftime last year. Maroon 5. Looking for Maroon 5. Okay, most of y'all got that one. Right, 576 correct answers in there. And again, if you missed one of these first two questions, keep hanging out with us, keep playing along, keep getting more points. Next question, another multiple choice one. Which Gossip Girl star 
He's currently pregnant with her second child. Is it Leighton Meester, Blake Lively, or Taylor Momsen? <laughs> I mean, the obvious choice would be somebody with the last name Momsen, right? Can you imagine not having kids if your last name was Momsen? Is it her? Is it Blake? Or is it Leighton? I actually knew the answer to this. And it is Leighton Meester. It is Leighton Meester, currently pregnant with her second child. We wish her all the luck and health and happiness in the world. And that took some people off. The streak, 288 of you left. We are whittling them down here today. But hang in there. Somebody could still walk out of here with 100 bucks. Your next question, your fourth in this round. Which of these singers briefly attended the London School of Economics? Was it Freddie Mercury, Paul McCartney, or Mick Jagger? I honestly can't see any of these. Isn't that the thing with rock stars? Is they always sign like bad record deals and they get screwed? So... None of them really know much about economics, right? Rick, Mick Jagger is the answer. Mick freaking Jagger. I brought up Keith Richards. I guess I was thinking about Mick Jagger too. 192 of y'all knew that one. Not sure how long, how long he lasted. Who lasted longer, uh, Mick Jagger at the School of London Economics or the people playing today? Because these are some tough questions. Your next one is another multiple choicer. Your fifth one in this round. On the Canadian flag, how many points... Does the red maple leaf have? Woo! Is it 9, 10, or 11? So visualize the maple leaf. Think about in your head. Is it 9? Is it 10? Is it 11? Come on, Canadians. Where are you at? Show yourselves. It is 11. 11 points are held by the red maple leaf. Okay. And that's 122 of y'all still left. We, we had a lot of people that missed questions early, but we had a few duel that out all the way until the end yesterday. Could be the same thing today. Question number six. In 1977, a patent was successfully obtained for which of these hairstyles? Was it a comb over, a mullet, or a bowl cut? I've had all of these hairstyles at some point in my life. My hair's getting a little too long. I might, I might just have to cut it myself. Is that what y'all are doing? Let me know. The answer, looking for a comb-over. It was a comb-over. Yeah, you, somebody had a patent on a comb-over. Can you believe it? I know a guy in a big white house that if there was still a patent on that, he'd be owing a lot of money. The patent has since expired, so feel free to comb over your hair all you want. You don't have to pay anybody else. It's a dime. You live you. All right, next question. Which of these mascots debuted on Kellogg's cereal along with Tony the Tiger? Was it Ducan Sam, Katie the Kangaroo, or Dolly the Dolphin? This is the debut of Tony the Tiger. Who was, okay, I've heard of Ducan Sam. I don't know who Katie or Dolly are, and I apologize to them and their families. Never had cereal with y'all on the box, but apparently it was Katie the Kangaroo. Way back in 1952 is when Katie made her debut, and I guess they wanted Katie to debut alongside Tony because kids might be scared of tigers, but nobody's afraid of a kangaroo, right? You ever been up close to the kangaroo? They can punch and kick. They're dangerous animals. Keep your distance. 59. Perfect rounds. Still going in today's match. Are you warm? You feeling it? Here we go with your next question. It's another multiple choice, sir, and it is. In fireworks, the color blue is created by burning compounds of what metal? Is it copper, silver, or zinc? I happens on July 4th involving fireworks, does it? You ever have a good story? It's always a scary injury story, right? People got that one right. So we still have 60 perfect grams. Is it Lake Victoria, Lake Superior, or the Caspian Sea? This feels like a trick. Milky Fruits is still in there. Prizes is still in there. The Q account is still in there. Garth's still going strong. Hang in there. Who's got it? The answer, it was the Caspian Sea. I, I know what you're saying. Don't throw your phone like you're Russell Crowe, angry paparazzi. This thing about the minute. Caspian Sea is technically a lake. It's got a cool name. You don't want to call it Caspian Lake. Caspian Sea sounds better, but it is technically a lake, though. So. There you go. I know you have to apologize because it looks like 59 people got that one right, so we got a lot of smart eggs in here. 
All right, we're into double digits. Your 10th question in today's matchup, another multiple choicer. In the Brady Bunch, what is Carol Brady's maiden name? Is it Tyler, Cameron, or Smith? This might be my all-time favorite question. This is a good, deep cut. Here's the story of a lovely lady, but what was her maiden name? They don't sing that in the jingle. The answer was, of course, Tyler. Yeah, it was Tyler. Okay. Nobody got tripped up on Tyler, really? I got a lot of TV pictures in here. 59 people, still perfect, through 10 questions, and we move on to your 11th one. Another multiple choice. What was the first movie to be released with a PG-13 rating? Was it Ghostbusters, Red Dawn, or Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Which one was it? I know the movie Gremlins played a factor in having a PG-13 rating because so many parents saw that movie, freaked out, and they said, we need our kids to be rendering. So the answer was actually Red Dawn. Yeah, starring Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen and these kids. They, they built a fort in the woods and they helped take over communists. It's a great movie. 56 people got that one right. So that got, okay, we're starting to whittle down to the real contenders. Even if you missed a question, keep playing. Hang in there. Maybe there's another Red Dawn question, God willing. Your next one, today's matchup, your 12th question. So fill in the blank. So get ready to type. In the original edition of Trivial Pursuit, what category is represented by the color yellow? So remember Trivial Pursuit, you have like the little pies. I call it pie, but I don't know what anybody else call it, but you put pies in the wheel, and you gotta get all pie slices in there, and then you go to the middle. Which one was the color yellow? I'm trying to think in my head. I believe I had a guess, but I don't want I think it was history, but I'm not sure. Let's see what we got. Was it history? I think it was history. A lot of people saying science, a lot of people saying sports. Got some entertainment ones. The answer, it was history. It was actually history. Hey, I got one right. The answer was history. And it looks like we got a total of 191 correct responses on there. So job well done, everyone. And we still have a number of competitors hanging in there for that perfect game here today, streaking towards $100. 42 perfect rounds left, and we move on to your next question. We're back to multiple choice, and that query is, which of these rock bands derives its name from The Simpsons? Is it Green Day, All Time Low, or Fallout Boy? Hmm. What do we have here? Simpsons, arguably the greatest. Is it even an argument, or is it just the greatest animated show ever? I love Family Guys, but I think I got to give it to The Simpsons. And for this question, I got to give it to Fallout Boy. Fallout Boy is the correct answer. Mentioned on The Simpsons, 42, still perfect rounds. We got a lot of smart eggs in here. And we're going on to your next question. And that is question number 14. It's multiple choice, and it is What TV series was the first one hour drama ever produced by HBO? Was it Sex and the City, Oz? Or six feet under. See, if this was still in blank, I'd be I'd be typing Sopranos, and I'd be a fool. But yes, yeah, Sex in the City's a good one. Oz, six feet. They're all great shows. HBO does great work for the most part. The answer is Oz. The prison show, very very visceral, and it looks like we got some correct responses. Forty one people still hanging in there. Okay, okay. Now you're going to make me throw my fastball, and I'm going to do it. Okay, you're streaking towards a hundred dollars. And here's a real tough one. It's multiple choice. Prepare yourself. The oldest living Oscar winner won her first statuette for what movie? Was it To Each His Own, The Heiress, or The Great Ziegfeld? Woo! Did you think you were going to hear that question today? The oldest living Oscar winner. And this person is over 100 years old. So... Over 100, she's 103, her name is Olivia de Havilland, and yes, it was to each his own. And that, that speedball got thrown by us, folks. Okay, that whittled some of y'all down. 23 perfect rounds remaining in this one. So, okay, just more 1940s Oscar questions. That's how we, that's how we get the streak going. All right, everybody playing, you locked in. The next question, it's another, it's another Oscar winner, and it's another multiple choice. In the film Moonstruck, Cher is taken to what Italian opera? Is it Madame Butterfly, Tosca, or La Boheme? What do y'all got there? 
Moonstruck, I think Cher, I think a young Nicolas Cage. I believe uh, Cher won an Oscar for that. I Cher won an Oscar for this. What's the name of the opera? Looking for La Bohème. La Bohème. That's the answer. And it's knocked a few more people off. We still got plenty of y'all still streaking towards that 100 bucks. 21. Perfect rounds still hanging in there. So is the host. And he's on to question number 17. Another multiple choicer. What was Elvis Presley's star sign? Was it Capricorn, Gemini, or Pisces? So, you know, if, if you're into that stuff, I'm not really, I'm a cancer. I don't really like, like, mine's the only one that's also a disease. So I don't really like talking about it. Apparently I'm emotional, yet I have a good heart, I think. Capricorn, Gemini, or Pisces? Who was Elvis? Elvis Presley, the king, was a Capricorn. Of course he was. He was a Capricorn, and he's the king. And somebody else is going to be the king. I don't think Elvis is playing today, but somebody could be the new king of the queue. You're going for that crown. You need to hit about 10 more correct, and then you're winning 100 bucks. So you ready? Strapped in? Next question. In which country are the ruins of Lalabella? Is it Kenya, Ethiopia, or Somalia? Lalabella. Fun word to say. Kenya, Ethiopia, or Somalia? I don't think any I Jones has been after this one yet, so I don't know the answer. Do you? Did you check off Ethiopia? Because that's what we were looking for. Ethiopia is the correct answer. All good guesses. Ethiopia is the right one. And it looks like we still have 20 perfect rounds in today's matchup in the queue. Your next one, another multiple choice. Of these snakes, who is the fastest? Is it the Black Mamba, King Cobra, or Pit Viper? I'll tell you this, they're all, all faster than me. I don't want to be in a pit with any of them. Not a black mama, not a king cobra, not a pit. If I had to be, look, any one of these snakes is killing me, so I think I'd rather be in there with a cobra just because they look so cool. Like, I want to be admiring it as I die. But we were actually looking for the black mamba. Black mamba is the fastest snake of those three. And a lot of people are big Kobe fans. May he rest in peace because we got 20 perfect answers in that we'll still have 20 perfect rounds as well and we move on to your next question We're streaking towards the cash who has the most triple doubles in the nba all times the magic johnson russell westbrook or oscar robertson is it let's see magic is his nickname is magic he's urban magic johnson russell westbrook does he have this i think we just call him russ and then oscar robertson was known as the big o so who's got the most triple doubles ever the answer is not me in my high school career. We're actually looking for the big O from the University of Cincinnati, Oscar Robertson, and 20 perfect, correct answers there. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. Still got 20 perfect rounds going. I might have been tempted to go for Russ because he's got so many currently, but the big O is the answer. And we're already on question number 21. You're getting towards that 100 bucks. We got a multiple choice one up next. What is the most common pub name in Britain? Is it the Crown, Red Lion, or Royal Oak? Here in the States, our most popular pub name, I'm going to guess Buffalo Wild Wings. But I, I, they should have one of those in Britain, right? People get in there to watch the, the football matches. The answer is, of course, Red Lion. See, I would have gone with Crown. Wow, okay. 20 perfect rounds still going here. Our next one, we're on to 22. In what year was Sydney House Opera was Sydney Opera House completed? I would have called it Sydney House Opera. Was it 1973, 1970, or 1968? In which year was Sydney Opera House finally completed? I don't know how long it took him to build it, but I do know the year it ended, and that was in 1973. How many? Still perfect. Still 20 perfect. We got 20 ballers in here today. If times left that are in the arena. This is getting really good. And just so you 20 know that if, uh, if you're using Google, it's considered cheating, so don't do it. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to your next question. You guys are all lost in here. I don't have to reprimand anybody. Spit that gum out, you're in class. Your 23rd question in today's matchup. Which port city in Ireland <laughs> is most famous for its crystal factor? Which port city is most famous for its crystal? Is it Cork, Waterford, or Belfast? Okay, somebody's got to miss this one, right? Let's see. The answer was Waterford. Who had what? What do we got? It's a, it's, it's a Waterford. 
and we still have so many perfect rounds going. And like everybody else who's watching, keep playing, keep answering, because you're getting points towards the monthly leaderboard. Fifteen hundred dollars could be at the end of the rainbow. Your next question, you got another multiple choice here. Which animal is the only known vertebrate to give birth to identical quadruplets every time? Is it pangolin, echidna, or a nine-banded armadillo? Whew. We're really... That feels like a three in the morning question. Okay. Vertebrae, quadruplets, every time. It's, of course, a nine-banded armadillo. I mean, we all learned that in first grade. Okay, that took somebody down. Somebody got taken out there. So 19 perfect rounds left. Somebody missed that one. Somebody probably went for the echidna. All right, next one, another multiple choice question. And this is your 25th question. So get this one right, get the next one right, and then somebody's definitely walking out of here with 100 bucks today. Okay. Emu eggs are dark green and the same size as which popular food? Is it an avocado, an apple, or a kiwi? Because we're just going with, like, what, what is a usual avocado, your run-of-the-mill apple, your ordinary kiwi look like? Emu eggs. We all, I know that no breakfast is complete in my household without an emu egg. And the answer is the avocado. The avocado is what an emu egg looks like. So next time you're at Whole Foods and you say, I want some avocados, careful, it might actually be an emu egg. All right. 15 perfect rounds still remaining. And this question is going to tie the record for King of the Q. If you get this one right, then you're tied with the all time record. You haven't won any money yet. That's going to happen later, but you're going to tie the all-time record as of today. It's a multiple-choice question, and it is. Which famous singer suffered from mesiodentes, a rare oral condition? Is it Freddie Mercury, Elton John, or Prince? Mesiodentes. They're all great. They can all belt out a tune. All magnanimous performers, but only one suffered from that rare oral condition. Freddie Mercury was the answer. The lead singer of Queen. Did you see Bohemian Rhapsody? It's a darn good movie. Okay. Still got 14 perfect rounds. 14 people have tied the all-time record for King of the Q. And now the streak will start to come to completion. Because somebody's got to get this next one right. If anybody gets this one right, or multiple people, then we're guaranteed somebody is walking out of here with $100. It's a multiple choice question. Here it is. Kanye West's song, Gold Digger borrows its famous melody from which artist? Is it Quincy Jones, Ray Charles, or Aretha Franklin? All right, let's see who's still in here. Colonial 96, DJ Nikki 07, Kalisti. Got some darn good players in here today. Did you know the Kanye West tune? You know what we're talking about? You know who we borrowed from? It was Ray Charles. Ray Charles was the answer, and 14 people knew that one that are still perfect here today. So somebody's getting 100 bucks today. Somebody's getting $100. And if you make it a question 100, I think I get $100 too. <laughs> we'll, we'll negotiate off there. Right, Molly? Hey, my dog needs to eat. Okay, your next question. Somebody's, somebody's going home with $100. That's what's exciting. 28. Hit 28 in this round. It's another multiple choice, sir. Eric Clapton's hit Layla is written about which famous musician's wife? Is it Neil Young? George Harrison, or Graham Nash. Oh, sorry about all-time great song. Great instrumental there at the end. It's Dwayne Allman is playing a uh, slide guitar in that. Then you hear the birds right at the end of the song. Can you picture the song in, in your ears? And then you might not know. It's actually about Patty is her name. And it is George Harrison's wife. Right. I think it was Patty, right? I don't know why you'd call it Layla. Maybe to disguise the fact that it's about your buddy's wife. <laughs> 